Hey everybody, you have David Abrams here along with our guest today, Chris Brisson, the CEO and founder of Call Loop and Sales Message. We have a really great call today. I'm, I'm really excited to talk about it. Call Loop, a company that has over 40,000 customers already that have gone through and Sales Message, a brand new software. We can learn a lot about what you know Chris is doing over there as far as validation and marketing strategies and what the plan is moving forward. And so I'm really excited for the call. I just want to say hey to everyone who's on right now. Thanks so much for joining us live. And Chris, thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, thanks for reaching out. I, uh, I see what you guys are up to, and uh, it's really exciting. So glad to, uh, to share in our own journey. That's awesome, man. Yeah, definitely follow a lot of what you guys do and, and absolutely love it uh, for a while now. And I just want to let everyone know that the sun is literally about to peak over this building. So you can see my face is going to start glowing here in just a couple seconds here. But, but Chris, start us off, man. Tell us about Call Loop. When did you begin this journey? How did you get started? What was unique about it when you just got just got up and running? Yeah, uh, long story short is I was um, I had a couple information products out there and I was doing product launch consulting and I was kind of one of the first guys to really do that for for clients. And um, I basically was automating everything. But the one thing that we could not automate was voice broadcasting mm -hmm. and text messaging. And so I looked out there for different solutions. I couldn't really find anything. Uh, and actually it's funny is Todd Brown, who's a mutual friend of ours, uh, him and I were really just talking one day and I was actually at a rich Sheffern event and we got talking and, uh, Todd's like, you know, be really cool is you could do voice broadcast autoresponders. And it was something that I always wanted to automate to put into kind of the marketing stack is just another multi channel approach. And so I was like, all right, well, let me. Like, let me build it, you know? <laughs> and so uh, kind of ignorantly, I never really, well, I shouldn't say that. We did build a little software before, but not like a full-fledged software company. It was just kind of little small stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went out, found uh, an API, and I reached out to the company and basically said, hey, uh, I'm looking for a developer to help me build this prototype. And that developer turned into my business partner for oh, Call Loop. Yeah, so this was really 2009 was the idea, but we launched, you know, we launched the company in 2011 as kind of a beta for about a year, and then in 2012 we kind of rolled out the, the actual product. So 2012 was really kind of the first year in business, if you will. But we started development 2010 ish, like late 2010. So that's awesome. So you're not the technical founder. You obviously brought someone in. What, was it hard to find the right person for that? You said you kind of you know met them like how I think that's kind of the big holdup for a lot of business people. For us in particular, like when we like you said, we've done smaller software, so we'd never done a software company, and we made right. a lot of early on mistakes from that development cycle itself. How how was that kind of part of the journey getting getting your business partner in at that time? You know, it was uh, I you know I never heard of like SaaS or never heard of, you know, venture capital. I've heard of it, but never really kind of looked into it. And, uh, you know, I just, I wanted to get a prototype built. I didn't necessarily want to build a company. And so it was just more of like, Hey, I want to get this kind of tool built and let's see where it goes. And so we kind of started to work together and it started to work out. And so it was more like, Hey, like this can actually be something, uh, interesting. Like this can actually be a, a larger company. And so, um, it just kind of melted together. We got along really well. And, you know, my talent was more on the sales and marketing side. Um, although, I mean, I can code up a site, I can do HTML, CSS, I can do all that stuff. I can design it, which is really what I did. Mm -hmm. And then he could build, you know, all the infrastructure back in that sort of thing. And so, you know, it matched very well. And we were a small scrappy team and we didn't, you know, we, we put in maybe 10,000 bucks oh, wow. to, to really get it started. But it was nights and weekends. It wasn't like a full time effort. Uh, and looking back, it's like, you know, we probably should have done that. But, you know, even today, it's like, if we did not do that, I don't think colleague would have existed. Mm -hmm. um, but really, you know, I think I just, I just kept going and it just kind of worked out. And, you know, I think Ronnie saw into kind of the vision of what we could create as well. And so it was, I mean, we both didn't take any paycheck or make any money in the beginning. Uh, and this is like prior to really understanding, um, you know, software, software is hard, you know, and software is not, it's not as easy as people think. First of all, if you're a, you know, if you're a marketer, you're a sales guy, like you can sell, 
but to build a software company is, is a little bit more difficult. You know, you have to have a really good technical team uh, and technical co-founder help you guide down that path. Um, because if you're just going blatant, maybe you're hiring somebody, you know, offshore or something without like an understanding, uh, it can be quite difficult. It's not an info product because everything breaks. I'm sure you guys have seen all the trials and tribulations of building a platform and a really awesome technology. And it's, uh, it can be tough. You know, info product, you have a website, you have payments, and you have email. And that's it. <laughs> uh, on the other side, with software, there's a million variables that can go wrong. And, and they do. And they, they do often. So They, they do often. <laughs> that's the yeah. right way to think it. But it's, yeah. it's funny. So many people get um, attracted to SaaS for the recurring payments. They see, you know, monthly recurring revenue. They see, you know, the ability to solve bigger problems. But with that bigger yeah. problems that you're solving is a whole new learning curve. So, you know, that's why I really love to do this show. I think it, it kind of teaches a lot of those lessons that, you know, naively we, we jumped in without actually knowing a lot of it and we learned it yeah. along the way, but hopefully we can help someone, um, you know, get down the path without doing all of our mistakes. So, so it sounds like you guys had some initial ideas of what you wanted to build based on some conversations at some marketing events and the consulting you were doing. Once you started building it, what were you doing to validate it that you guys were on the right path, that it was working, or were you just using it yourselves? Yeah, I mean, really, we just we had a bunch of customers, and, and you know, I had a kind of a, a nice net, network of people that were like, "Dude, build it! Like, we want it, we want to use it." And so, uh, we actually went to an event in Vegas, and it was like a real estate investor event. And turned out, we got like our core group of like really hardcore customers from that, and so. Uh, that was the original, the original kind of validation. I mean, the first year, I think we did five grand, so it wasn't like a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, the next year, we did a hundred grand, and so uh, it just really kind of snowballed from there. But, but again, it was just the product wasn't great by by any means. But it, all it did was just voice broadcasting. We didn't have uh, SMS at that time, which is funny because I met Jeff, who is the CEO of Twilio now. Uh, mm -hmm. Literally, when he just started Twilio. And they were just, you know, two people, three people. That's and now they're obviously a public company and, you know, everybody knows the Twilio. Um, but yeah, it was really that one event and then it just kind of spread and organically spread. And, you know, today it's just pretty much kind of a, a machine where, you know, we're getting a lot of our traffic from SEO. We have a bunch of affiliates, um, but the majority of traffic is through SEO. We're not really doing any paid media, if you will, mm -hmm. um, but it's all organic. A lot of word of mouth uh, is really kind of driving call loop uh, today. So, so that first year to that second year, that 5,000 to 100,000 ARR, what was that? Was that just the SEO change or what kind of marketing changes did you guys take? What approaches? I mean, obviously you said some word of mouth. So maybe you're, as your customer uh, group grew, so did your customer base. But what were you doing in particular in that first year? Because that, that was probably a really big year when you guys were saying, hey, some money's coming in. We got some initial customers. What, what was the next step? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, I would say the original market we went after was really kind of the marketers. And so, I mean, really the people that that I knew and the relationships that I built. Uh, and so they started building into their own processes and their own systems. Um, you know, a lot of guys doing webinars, that sort of thing. And so you know, that was kind of that that original kind of like focus and, and niche, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and th that was it. And so it just kind of, kind of grew from that. Uh, we really didn't, and when I say we, it was really me, but uh, I didn't really have a heavy focus on um, on the sales side of it, it was really just more of kind of self-serve platform and still remains today for the most part. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was kind of, it served a purpose for a core group of people. Like we had basically, you know, we still do today, which is like autoresponders for text messaging, for voice messaging, uh, that sort of thing. Actually a couple, maybe two years later, we introduced kind of text to join, which is the whole uh, keyword type thing. But yeah, that original base is really, you know, mass texting, mass voice broadcasts uh, that was tied to some sort of ROI, right? Uh, some sort of, you know, return on investment. So, hey, I want to send out a broadcast and, you know, drive more people to an event or do some sort of offer, some sort of sale. So, you know, guys like Perry Marshall, you know, we have clients like Agora, um, you know, wow. it just kind of runs the gamut. So that's awesome. And yeah, I'm sure as soon as people start when the big gurus start using it, people start trickling down as far as how to use it. Strategies probably get talked about with tool and stuff like that. So that probably definitely helps as well. Yeah. And so what is, what is the MRR these days? What are you guys at? Well, we just broke the magical number. Um, so we broke actually 84 and change last month. 
congratulations. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, for the most part, it's been automated and we haven't, uh, you know, you know, we don't have a sales team. It's all self-serve. So it's uh, it's a very self-sustaining, self-automating uh, company and business. And obviously there's so much more we can do with it, you know, uh, as far as team and salespeople and all that sort of stuff, which actually we're kind of beefing up for. But yeah, so last month was a, was a good month. And in fact, probably the last the last quarter of the year is always big. So I think uh, we'll be bigly uh, <laughs> towards the end of the year. So That's awesome. And so everyone knows at around 80, 84, you're breaking the million dollar year ARR mark. So it's a really big milestone. Um, it's really exciting. That's awesome. And I think at this point now, uh, your flywheel will just continue to move with momentum faster and faster. So you guys really can scale up. And that's, that's really exciting. And, and so one of the things that, you know, every SaaS company deals with, and I'm sure you guys do, and, and we love to learn about is churn. I mean, with this great growth, are you guys, you know, what, what kind of revenue churn or user churn do you actually see inside of the company? Yeah, good question. You know, like we, we used to use bare metrics. Um, the reality is, is call loop is not a quote unquote true SaaS company. So we generate, I mean, I would say probably it's like a 70, 30. So 30% is monthly subscription and that sort of thing. But the majority of people and really what we push is the pays you go because that is more frequency based. Mm -hmm. So we find a lot more customers that are actually purchasing, you know, credits uh, than month to month. You know, I think uh, text messaging is kind of, you know, it's an interesting play. A lot of people use it, but it's like, it's kind of later in the stack, if you will. And so we have certain businesses that are like, oh, I just need it for a month, right? And so, well, they're not going to stick for two, three, four, five months because that's that type of business. Mm -hmm. And so the pay as you go kind of helps, you know, uh, a lot of customers. We have a lot of bulk customers that just pop, buy a bunch of uh, credits up front. Um, so, you know, as far as the churn, um, it's not that great, at least for the, the subscription side of things. Uh, and then we have, you know, we have monthly plans. We have monthly keywords, that sort of thing. Um, but the frequency on the pay as you go, I mean, we have customers that will pay, I don't know, they'll buy 30 times a month, you know, 20 oh. times a month. So it's different than like one time a month, you know, but mm -hmm. that in a way is a form of SaaS. It's just not the true, I mean, we're software as a yeah. service. It's just, you know, we're and software. Payments are different. Yeah, exactly. So that's awesome to hear. I mean, that's a, we, we are, often asked about pay as you go as well. And it's really cool to see someone using that model and doing it really effectively. So would you say like the pay as you go is what percentage of your, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's 70%. 70%, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, what did you, when did you guys kind of figure that out? When did you guys shift to that model? Was there a moment when you guys, you know, said, hey, our churn's pretty high. Maybe we should offer some, you know, pay as you go option or was it something that you always had? Yeah, honestly, it was the beginning. Like we built it that way. Um, we we actually took kind of a card from Twilio, uh, which is you know it's that whole pay as you go model. Uh, you can come in, you can buy credits when you want, that sort of thing. And actually, it wasn't until probably about two years in that we actually created a, a subscription plan. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we just you know again over the years we just saw different types of customers that come through, and you know a lot of people. I mean, there's a lot of different things that we, we can definitely do better um, because, you know, I mean, one of the things that we find with Call Loop is, hey, you sign up for 29 a month, we roll over credits. So after two, three months, they're like, oh, I have enough credits. I didn't use them. Let me cancel. So there's certain ways to kind of work with the pricing uh, that, you know, we're going to focus on for the rest of the year um, because it's just not fully optimized. You know, there's certain instances where they'll cancel, or they'll, they'll keep it. You know, I think there's a, there's a better way to do it. Um, but again, you know, most of our, most of the revenue generated is coming from that, you know, one-time purchase, bulk purchase, multiple frequency per month. Plus we have an auto charge mechanism. So once they fall below a certain, uh, credit amount, then it, you know, kind of auto charges, tops it back off. Cause a lot of people put it into their marketing stack, if you will. Mm -hmm. That's smart to do that, to have the auto yeah. refill. Um, so I, I want to jump over to sales messages. So your new uh, staff that you're working on now, you're really excited about it. But before I do, what looking back at the journey at Call Loop, what would you say was maybe a big failure or something that happened that taught you a really valuable lesson that maybe you're, you're using now over at sales message or just something that you use looking forward now in business? Uh, selling. Yeah. <laughs> selling, you know, selling early and often. Uh, I think 
you know, looking back in the beginning of Call Loop, and we kind of talked about it in the beginning here, which is, you know, I'm very product focused. I want the product to be good and I want it to work. Uh, I want it to be great. And, you know, there comes a time where it's going to be good. It's going to be good enough, but you really have to start selling it, marketing it. Uh, because in many respects, you know, sales cures all. You know, the more revenue you're making, the more money you're making, you hire more people, you can bring more people on, you can grow the team uh, and expand that way. And so, you know, looking back, it's definitely focus on selling. Mm -hmm. What's funny is we were actually working on uh, a different software for about a year. It was called uh, Kick a Conference. And we didn't really sell it. And I didn't apply the lesson I learned. And so we said, all right, after a year, I said, screw it, let's stop. And uh, we said, hey, here's my idea for sales message. Let's go ahead and do it. And literally that same week, we had the idea, or I had the idea. We said, let's do it. That week, we ended up bringing like 25 beta people. So it was just, all right, let's go. Like, let's just sell. And so we've started to continue that. And just, again, just focus on bringing customers, focus on selling, focus on bringing revenue so we can grow and, and kind of scale a little faster. Totally agree. And we had to do the exact same thing. We talked about this early on, but you know, we're both product people. It's really hard to break through that, that, um, that barrier in your head. That's like, Hey, this isn't good enough yet. So when you yeah. get to that point and you, you've taught yourself, okay, now I gotta get out there. And so what, what are you doing to get those 25 beta people? What are you doing to get your first customers? in? I mean, it's one thing to say, Hey, selling is good, but like, what are the strategies that you're using to, to get those people initially in? Yeah. I mean, you mentioned 40,000 customers. I wish we had 40,000 customers. I mean, we have 40,000, 40 plus thousand users and customers, you know, people, again, people sign up, they don't purchase that sort of thing. Um, but call loop was a good seed for it. You know, call loop was, uh, you know, we have a lot of customers that use our platform for text messaging. Uh, sales message is like Gmail for texting, right? It's two way texting from real phone numbers. Uh, so you can kind of cut through the clutter. You can create conversations. You can get things done a lot quicker than the whole phone tag kind of thing going on. Um, but, uh, um, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, it's just different strategies. You probably go to your list is what you're going to say. Yeah. I mean, we went to our list, right? I mean, yeah. colleague was a good seed for that. And again, it was really just like, all right, let's bring in some money just to get kind of that momentum, get that excitement going to, to focus on it. Uh, and so, you know, now it really comes down to really looking at what works for call loop. You know, SEO is a great strategy. It still remains a great strategy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, starting to, to ramp that up, um, obviously paid media in the beginning to start to generate some, some current customers, uh, outbound, you know, we have a lot of different verticals that we're seeing some traction with. Mm -hmm. And so lining up some joint ventures, doing webinars, you know, just really starting to create that process for finding, landing, contacting, um, JVs and partners to really roll out, uh, uh, you know, webinar or some sort of marketing strategy together to, to generate and bring in new customers. So I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you can focus on free SEO is going to take a while. We can do paid media. We're such a low price point that it's not make, it doesn't make much sense. Yeah, so joint ventures. Yeah. So joint ventures is really kind of where the focus is. Is so the joint ventures early on, how are you guys packaging it to give a good value, to give it enough? Uh, if, if you're not making enough on paid advertising, how are you doing in a joint venture package? And also yeah. as someone just starting, this is kind of good advice for anyone just starting in SaaS, how are you approaching JVs with a, a webinar right now? Are you, are you testing it early on? Like how do you approach a JV um, at this point in a new company? Yeah, good question. I mean, sales messages is an inexpensive product. I mean, it's 10 bucks a month, you're paying per messaging. I mean, our things at scale. And as we start building, we're gonna add different tiers and different feature sets and that sort of thing. But right now, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, to go to an affiliate and go, hey, you can make $2 off the purchase, no one's gonna get really excited about that. And so, you know, I've really just started to put together a, a, a bundle, right? Like a higher offer, you know, 197, 297, we're testing, you know, larger price points. Uh, that a it makes sense for the affiliate to promote because they can make some extra money and then for us to to bring in the revenue to help us move a lot faster so really just you know having that higher ticket you know kind of opens the door to affiliates to say yeah let's go ahead and do it you know they can make more money uh and you know you look at obviously russell brunson you look at you know brian with sam cart and how they're kind of packaging that you know thousand dollar package and they're killing it you know they're doing really well with it and so you know how can Really, if as a initial software company, how can you create that higher price point 
that gets affiliates excited, that gets people excited to, to make some money. Now, on the other side, I mean, you look at Nathan with ConvertKit, and I think he just does a webinar for a dollar trial or a free trial. And so, you know, you have both sides of it. So is it just about getting people into your funnel and getting them to stick? Or is it about selling that, that high-end offer uh, to get people to, um, to purchase that, to get your affiliates excited? You know, I think affiliates is an interesting thing. With, sales, or with Call Loop, we have like 1,700 affiliates. So we have a lot of people to tap into that have lists, that have audiences, um, and that we can do webinars with. And there's some people that, you know, for them, they're okay with making a couple hundred bucks a month. Now you go to a larger super affiliate, they're gonna be like, all right, you know, it's all about the money. Yeah. So, you know, what is the price point? What's the conversion rate? What's all those metrics and numbers uh, and that stuff that we're still working on. But, you know, I really say for anybody, that's probably the fastest way to, to, to get momentum is to put some joint venture webinars together and just nail it, you know, just focus on that for a good six months and, uh, and you'll, you'll make money, <laughs> you know, you'll definitely grow it. That's so. awesome. And would you say that, um, knowing their audience is really important to you as far as like maybe the, the package offer and then also like what to put in that package? Or are you looking for affiliates that are in one general niche and just kind of making a general uh, angle for the webinar across the board? Yeah. I mean, Obviously, when you're starting out, you're just trying to figure out who is that actual customer. Yeah. So you have no idea. Is it that person? Is it this person? You know, is it in Infusionsoft uh, Marketplace? You know, is it this guy? Is it that? And so really, you're just trying to get as many people as possible to use the product to see where it sticks. And so we found, you know, a good three or four verticals that it's like, all right, you know, like we can go really hard in that niche and I think it'll really stick. So it really comes down to, you know, we actually built a, a software a couple of years ago. Uh, called JV Genie with Kyle Graham. You know Kyle. We had him on the show. <laughs> uh, so JV Genie, basically, what it did was you type in a keyword, it would go out to Google, Yahoo, Bing, pull down all the websites that ranked their Alexa, their Compete rank, all that sort of stuff. You know who's advertising. It would look up who is. It would get their email. It would get all that stuff. And then guess what? If they're spending money, they're probably making money. They have a list of people, a list of buyers. If they're ranked, they're probably getting traffic. They're probably getting, you know, subscribers and customers. And why not reach out to them to set up some sort of joint venture? Uh, there's a really cool tool that kind of takes um, sales messages or JVG to the next level, which is called Buzzstream. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really awesome tool. So if you're wanting to kind of go out, look at your market based on your certain keywords and find out who ranks for what, how much traffic they get, you know, their website, their email address, their... Uh, name, their city, state, all that stuff. Buzzstream will, will do that for you. Um, anyhow, roundabout way. I hope that uh, that answers the question. But it definitely does. No, it's 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 a great answer, and I think um, I think the hardest time to set these up is early on because you're still figuring out like that customer and um, figuring out who's the right affiliates. But tools like that are fantastic, and sometimes it's a numbers game to start with until you get momentum and the numbers from your webinar, and you have a little bit more information and metrics to go to the bigger guys. But um, that's awesome, man. So let me let me ask you this: you, you've you know you started in consulting, you had some early smaller softwares, you got into you know Call Loop, a bigger SaaS company. Now you're starting another one. You know they're obviously right now they're all around mobile. But what what is it that's driving you? Like what is your why? And you know what keeps you going to start <laughs> SaaS, knowing how tough it is and the the journey is so long and hard. What you know what is it about it? What's your why? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it's been, it's been a wild journey. You know, it's, it's, you know, as I'm sure you can imagine some days you're like, man, why am I doing this? You know, what, what, why am I doing this? You know, why don't I just create an info product with systemly or something? And, you know, I'll be totally fine. I don't have to worry with all this, this stuff. Um, and that, you know, I've definitely had those thoughts, you know, over the years. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, for me, it's always about, you know, creating something of value, creating something that's unique and different, you know, because there's so many different people out there doing all the same thing. And so, you know, uh, accomplishment for me is really about, you know, creating something different, unique, special in the marketplace that, you know, yeah, there's other people out there that do it. Yes, there's competitors, but, you know, it's different. It's a little bit unique. And, um, you know, and finding, you know, the, the, the strength for me is building product. And focusing on that, you know, it's not the guru world and, you know, being a personality and that sort of thing. And so 
uh, really move towards building product and that sort of thing. But really my family, you know, uh, a, a friend of mine just passed away last week, a, a tragic car accident. And uh, it really hit me really hard. And he was the kind of guy that just, man, he, you know, he just went after everything he did and really lived with like passion and purpose mm -hmm. and just did what he wanted to do. And, you know, just it really struck me last week of, wow, you know, just what, why, you know, is the purpose big enough to continue doing what I'm doing? You know, it just really helps you. It brings you back into reality and what is truly important. Um, and yeah, getting traffic is great and all that stuff, but you know, I've got kids, I've got a wife and, you know, building something to give them a great life is, is really why I'm doing it. Uh, and, and also too, to build a great team of other people to, to share in this journey because, uh, it, it can be a lonely journey for a lot of people, uh, you know, and building something from scratch and some people will come in, some people will go, but, you know, to kind of continue to have that focus, for that that grander vision um you know you got to have that that north star so that's really beautiful and sorry to hear that and i know how, yeah. how tough those moments can be but you know unfortunately sometimes they offer us the best perspective of our own lives they kind of give us yeah. time to really you know sometimes we make the smallest problems in our lives the biggest and we're so close to them that they seem gigantic but then moments of perspective help put things back in line and help us to drive forward. And, you know, we have only so much finite time in this yeah. world and we really have to do what we can to, to enjoy it and make it worthwhile for, for our families, for ourselves. And, um, that's powerful, man. I really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. No worries. But cool. Let's, let's jump into some, um, quick fire discover questions and then we'll let you go today. So these are just, you know, kind of think through these questions, try to answer as fast as you can, just some uh, fun questions here, but how much do you read during the week? I read a lot. I can, it's hard to keep track of because it's not like I'm reading one book, um, but it's like, you know, like I'm sure most people I'm reading medium articles. I'm reading, you know, watching videos. I'm, I'm doing, you know, all sorts of different content. You know, I think like focus reading. Um, I probably read maybe two books a month. You know, I just finished up Ryan Holiday's new book, um, A Perennial Seller, which is really good. So, I mean, those are the things where I'll literally step out. I'll set the time and you know, focus on reading a book, but I read stuff all the time. Uh, do I consume it all and do, you know, take action on the, the things I'm listening to or podcasts? Uh, mostly not, but you know, I'm the same way. I'm I always, to, yeah. yeah. I like to learn and listen. That, that's a great book by Ryan holiday, by the way, all his stuff is, is really amazing. I actually picked up, I, he has like a book list. I went through his book list and started picking up a bunch of great books that he has. Oh, be careful. How, you can order a lot. <laughs> oh yeah. I've got a whole yeah. stack here of new books. I know. So I've done that too. <laughs> <laughs> What's your top book recommendation right now? Um, top book recommendation. Uh, I would say perennial seller. I mean, obviously it's so new. Um, it's still kind of fresh in my head, but you know, that's a, that's a really great book. Uh, it's about kind of creating, you know, how do you create that legacy or how do you create that legacy content, mm. that con you know, that, that yeah. an information or, you know, that, that thing that will allow you to be around for a hundred years, you know? And so uh, it's not as easy as it sounds, but, you know, it really just kind of brings you back to, again, like purpose, mission, vision, you know, uh, that sort of thing. So yeah, I'll, I'll say that book. Awesome. What would you tell your younger self starting again? this business, maybe called it? Uh, um, I would say try, like build a team, uh, build a team and build a team that can be together in the same building. You know, being a remote team, it sounds great. You know, there's pros to it, there's cons to it. And so I think when you, you know, to create an income, you can build a remote team and build a product and do all that sort of stuff. But if you really want to take it to the next level, like a Zapier and a Buffer, they're an anomaly. Like that, they've done a really good job with that. Uh, for most people, it's, it's, that's hard. And so like, that's a culture thing. And so if you're really wanting to build a larger company business, culture is a big part of that. And, you know, with a remote team, it can be quite difficult. And so um, really starting you know, kind of sales message and, and that sort of thing. It's like, we're remote, but you know, going forward, it's, uh, 
I don't know if we'll be remote. Like, you know, I want to kind of build that team. And we have an office, beautiful office. Um, and we have, you know, two people in the office, but you know, we got seven people. I want to bring everyone together and, you know, build that community and culture and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, that, that's really important. And obviously mission, you know, like, why are you doing it? What's the vision with it? Um, if it's just making money, cool, just make money. But if you want to build a, a team, your team has to know where the heck you're going. And if you don't know, like, how do you expect them to buy into it? And so like, you know, while I'm saying this, I'm really speaking to myself. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would say that. That's fantastic advice. Amazing advice. What would be, and this is, goes along with this, what would be some advice you're giving someone just starting an online company or, or possibly a SaaS? Yeah, I would say, you know, problems are markets. And so, you know, when you're looking at wanting to create a product, like really look at what problem are you solving or a problem you're experiencing in your own life that, you know, software can help solve. And so, you know, like really every problem that I've started to focus on or built or went down the road was like, oh yeah, like that's a problem that I'm experiencing. It just so happens other people are as well. And so, you know, I think, you know, when you're going out and you're just looking for a company to build and you don't know the problem intimately or you're not experiencing it, you know, the pain points, um, one, your passion is going to wane. And two, like, you don't really know what going on and like yeah you hear about y combinator you discover this market this and that but come on you know like for most people it's about finding a problem and solving a problem and it doesn't have to be a billion dollar problem you can you can make a great product and you know have a great life and, and build a great company with you know solving that solving something that you have and uh, and if other people have that problem as well you can you can do very well so it's amazing advice amazing advice yeah. What's one thing you're looking forward to most in technology as we move forward? Um, texting. <laughs> no, texting? I think, I mean, I think that the world is moving away from face-to-face uh, -face conversations or phone calls, uh, or at least my, you know, my version of the world is moving towards messaging, right? And so you're seeing it with Facebook, you're seeing it with, you know, text messaging, you're seeing it with WhatsApp. I mean, you're seeing it just all over the place. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk, spoke at some event and there's like, you know, probably 10,000 people in the stadium. And he's basically like, Hey, stand up. If this is true, uh, how many people get annoyed when someone calls you and like everyone stood up. And so like people, it's all about time. And he, he really, you know, emphasis emphasized on this point, which is, you know, we only have so much time. We don't want to be bothered. And so it's, we're living in our own Netflix world, which is I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Don't force something on me or have me show up at a certain time if I don't want to. Like, don't interrupt me. And so I think we're moving into a world where uh, we can own our time. And, you know, text messaging and messaging kind of helps us take that back. And we just want to be a part of that. So, you know, help businesses kind of uh, do that, you know, experience that. So That's crazy. Do you think that's good for society to move towards that? It's going to happen. It already is. Yeah. You're already doing it, right? Like, it's already done. How many people call you and you just don't pick up? Uh, nobody calls me anymore, so I don't have right. to pick up any. <laughs> right. That's funny. So, that's unfortunately, crazy. That's just the reality, but you know, I think it's that's where it's going. That's awesome. Well, Chris, I really just want to thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, everyone, for showing up to this call. I learned a ton, by the way, and that was awesome answers at the end as well. So really cool. appreciate your honesty, your transparency today, man, and um, really looking forward to, to seeing what you guys do with Sales Message as you move forward. Good deal. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye now.